I want to make this quick announcement. Those of you who like to get regular messages from the church, please make sure you register on the WhatsApp. Okay, so it's built up well. And sometimes you have questions about announcements. You can interact with the WhatsApp chat box. This month, as we're going to study about overcomers from God's holy word, we want to look at overcoming. How do we overcome? God wants us to be overcomers. You know, whether you're writing your <laughs> civil services or you're appearing in an interview or you're facing the challenges of life, no matter from which ever part of phase of situation of your life. Some people are into trouble, no matter they don't have any external problem. Some people are into trouble because of external problems. Some people have enemies, not outside, but within themselves. They become their own enemies. And how do we become overcomers? And the Bible has answers for that. Some people uh, misuse or abuse different methods to become overcomers. Some cheat, some fight, some become immoral to become overcomers. I remember, you know, earlier uh, during studies, time of uh, studies, there were guys who would take some kind of drugs to get that extra thing so they don't sleep and just stay awake and study. There were guys who spent more time on how to copy during exams and made adjustments. <laughs> you know, people want to overcome. We all want to overcome, but there's a good way of overcoming. And God wants us to be overcomers. There's this wrong idea sometimes in traditional Christianity that if you really have to be holy, you have to be a failure. If you're really a child of God, you're going to keep suffering until you're defeated. Don't worry, in eternal life you will have success. Well, it is partly true. In eternal life you will have success. But on the earth also, God wants you and me to be more than overcomers in Christ Jesus. God wants us to be overcomers. I understand when it is cold, people like to just, you know, stick together and feel warm. But I tell you something, clapping your hands and praising God occasionally, even if it makes you feel cold, in your heart there is a warmth of the anointing that God can pour and make it really interesting. Now the Bible tells us that God's love is one way that we must overcome. We must overcome through God's love. Shall we say that together if it's okay? Overcoming by God's love. The word love is so often understood and unfortunately more often misunderstood. In fact, love is probably the most positive emotions that human beings can ever have. But Really, if you look at love, it is an enduring feeling of attachment, especially today being Friendship Day. It's a feeling of attachment, which means the need to be with another person and requiring that connect and approval. Another feeling of love is the feeling not only of attachment, but of caring. The desire to put others' need above your own need or along with your own need is a sign of love for them. Another strong feeling of love along with being attached and being caring is the feeling of intimacy, the longing to be intimate with them. Whether in private or in physical or in thoughts, feelings and desire. In the context of family or deep friendships, love has to be understood with its paraphernalia or its surroundings. It must be understood with its uh, co-family members. When, when you want to walk in, when we want to be overcomers in love, you can become a failure in love if you don't handle love right. You can fly a plane successfully and you can fly a plane to disaster. 9-11 and history of the world brought the Twin Towers down because the terrorists flew the plane in a foolish way. If you fly it in a meaningful way, it will be successful. Similarly, 
If you handle love in a meaningful way, it will be successful. You can handle love in a disastrous way too. In fact, love must be handled, especially in the context of deep friendships, of family, of marriage. It must be handled with a willingness to forgive, the willingness to apologize when you're wrong, the willingness to forgive when others are wrong and they repent of their being wrong. You must be willing to express your care without shame. And in love, listen and communicate effectively. When someone's talking to you and they love you, don't look at their shoes and the sky. Look at their face and let them know that you're listening to them. Prioritize spending time with the other person that you express your love to. Reciprocate their loving gestures or their acts of kindness. Recognize and acknowledge and appreciate their good qualities. And these are important aspects of making love work in our lives. In fact, when you study the Holy Bible, there are at least four kinds of love mentioned in the Bible. Now, that may not be the appropriate way of saying it. No, let me rephrase that. When you study the Holy Bible, in the New Testament of the Bible, there are four words used in Greek. Bible was originally written in Greek. And so there are four words used for expressing love in the original Bible in Greek, the New Testament of the Holy Bible. The four words give four shades of love. The English translators translated all the four into the word love. But actually, if you look at it more deeply, there are four shades of love. The original four Greek words used in the Bible to express love are the words philia, which means social love, storge, which means a love that parents usually have for children. Eros, it's a love that has lust in it, sexual pleasure. Agape is the fourth word used in the Bible, and it's the word of God's unconditional love for us. These four words are used in the Bible intermittently or alternately expressing the love that we have and God's love for us. Sometimes if we are not careful, we can become failures simply because we mistook this love one in the place of the other and became failures. We must overcome with agape God's love. God wants us to become victorious. Many people use God's love only to feel comfort. That's not enough. You must use God's love to become victorious. You must use God's love to become overcomers. Don't just use God's love to survive. Don't just use God's love to sustain, but use God's love. I love God's love to make you an overcomer in Christ Jesus. This is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Yet amid all these things, come on, let's read it together. Amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who his love for us is the key there through him who loved us his love for us it's not just the existence of Christ that makes us victorious it is believing and reciprocating and appreciating and receiving his love for us that makes us overcomers and victorious and more than conquerors in Christ Jesus Talking about, <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking about more than overcomers, I'm sure you've heard this many times, but it's a true story. I think it was Evander Holyfield, the boxing champion, who was in the ring to fight and box. And finally, what happened? Was it Mike Tyson that could not win and bit off the ear of Evander Holyfield? And that man was bleeding over his ears because the boxer Mike Tyson, instead of using his hands and fists, used his mouth. <laughs> Something that many people do, but you know, this guy did it on the ears of Evander Holyfield and bit his ears off in the boxing ring. And so what happened? Evander Holyfield won that match and was given $5 million as the winning fee. 
as the champion trophy with a bleeding ear and five million dollars as he stood in his hand. The funny thing is, his wife, one slim lady, <laughs> she got into the ring and took that five million dollar and put in her purse. <laughs> and the commentator said something very interesting. The commentator said, Evander Holyfield is a conqueror, but his wife is more than a conqueror. <laughs> I know some men are thinking, where did my check go? But the point is this. The point is this. Christ won us the victory on a bloody cross. And we stand with our purse filled with being more than conquerors through Christ that gave his life for us. Receive, receive that love God has given us. And through the awareness of God's love, we can become more than conquerors. And this is exactly what the devil fights you when he tells you you are not loved by God. That God really don't care about you. That you don't match up to God's requirements. How can God love you? You are not good looking. You are not great. You are not smart. You are not holy enough. You are not efficient enough. The devil keeps talking to you and to your mind and you hear the voice of the devil as sometimes the voice of your own mind and because of that <coughs> you don't even realize it's the devil you think oh it's just my own mind I'm being reasonable no many times the devil comes to you in your personal pronoun and speaks to you in your own voice and therefore you and I get confused and we think oh I'm talking to myself and I think I'm speaking the truth to myself. God don't love me. Please believe the word of God more than your own word. God loves us and through his love, we can have an all surpassing victory and be more than conquerors through his love. When you believe in his love, you and I must discern his plan for us. Please don't doubt his love. Don't question his love. One of my friends in my school days, this is a funny story. One of my friends in my school days didn't eat his lunch and I noticed he was sad. And then we had a SUPW period. I don't know if any of you understand that, but we called it some useful period wasted. But there's some other meaningful abbreviation for that, which, which I, don't, I still don't know. And that's, that's the time where we all hang out in the canteen and drink a cup of coffee like some great men walking around the town, you know. And we just, we just talk big stuff. And, 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 and that time, my friend was not drinking coffee. I said, Pile yaar. He says, nay. He was sad. He was depressed. And I wanted to get to the root of it. So I asked. I began to inquire. You know, you can't keep secrets in your school days. So I began and I found out what happened is he had gone and proposed. He had gone and wished a girl that he really loved. I had told him many times, she's not worth it, leave it. But he wouldn't listen. He, so he bypassed me. He went to her and he wished her and, and told her that he cared for her. And she said, I hate you. I don't like you. Don't come back to me. He was wounded. <laughs> he was hurt. <laughs> of course, I cheered him up. I cheered him up. I made sure he had his coffee and ate some chicky and, and felt good about himself, chewed a bubble gum. The canteen was not supposed to sell bubble gum in our school days, but for professionals like us, they had adjustments in town. <laughs> you know, one good thing about India is, in India, anything can be done if it's done in a proper way. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I read that scripture, God will make a way where there is no way. I feel in India, it is the most possible. <laughs> it's just that I keep praying that scripture in the traffic. But anyway, <laughs> just like how people reject human love, we sometimes reject God's love. We say, God, I don't care for you. I don't believe you. I don't trust you. I don't think your love is able to take care of me. Don't you reject God's love. Don't insult God's love. Don't question God's love. Don't doubt God's love. Make a determination in your heart. I'll believe in God's love for me, irrespective of what I feel about myself, irrespective of what I'm going through. Yes, we cannot be overcomers without responding correctly to God's love. 
especially amidst problems or persecution or sometimes when God is silent. Activate your faith in his love. Even when he is quiet, trust his love. Believe in his love. Honor his love. Hallelujah. Because when you trust in his love, it's going to change everything. I love Apostle John in the Holy Bible. This guy understood what I'm preaching today. In fact, I understand what I'm preaching today because he understood Christ's love. And you know, he never spoke about how he loved Jesus. He always spoke about how Jesus loved him. In the Gospel of John, four times John introduces himself as being the disciple whom Jesus loved. I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now tell me something. Didn't Jesus love his own mother Mary? Of course he did. He honored her. He loved her. Didn't John know that Jesus loved Peter? John knew that. But John never bothered to compare Jesus' love for others with Jesus' love for him. He said, I don't know how much Jesus loves others. This I know. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves And trust me, there are times Jesus scolded John. Once the disciples were going through Samaria and uh, Jesus preached to the Samaritans and Samaritans rejected Jesus and said, ah, we don't care, you can go. Disciples got so angry, they said, do you know whom you are rejecting? He is the Messiah. He's got the secret code to eternal life. And you guys reject him? They were so angry. And the Samaritans doubled disciples' anger by saying, we don't care for you also, go. <clears throat> then John included, turned to Jesus and said, Jesus, this is showtime now. Bring fire from heaven. Whoop, let them go to eternity. At least balance will be saved. Jesus looked at John inclusive and or including John and said, what spirit is on you guys? Even after hearing that, John writes, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. I mean, think about it. Jesus just scolded this fellow to a point claiming that he may not have the Holy Spirit, but demon spirit. And still after hearing that, John writes, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. Why? He convinced the truth in himself. I am loved by Jesus. <clears throat> And, and I'll, I'll tell you something that will make it very interesting. I don't know why, but probably this played a part. He was the only disciple who died natural death. It's very effective. Believe in God's love. It will not only help in the way you live, it will help in the way you die. <laughs> Trust in God's love for you. Amen. And now, how did Jesus, our Lord, define this love? Matthew chapter 5, let's read verse 43, 44, and 45. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven, for he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. I just want to quickly decipher, break down the scripture uh, into three parts and then look at it in a way that will help us better. Jesus is saying, you have heard, it is said, love your neighbor. Neighbor means someone who does good to you, okay? Not the neighbor who took you to court for filing a case. No, the one who is good to you. It has been said, love that neighbor, but hate your enemy. Jesus said, hey, that is the norm. That is the fashion of the world. Now, if you want to be an overcomer through love, first thing, don't follow the ways of the world. Now, many of you who think that for Sunday church rules will work, from Monday it won't work. I want to tell you, this book works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. 365 days of the year and the extra day of the leap year. It works universally. It is the word of the living God. 
So the Bible is saying, I say unto you, love your enemies. Now see, this is where wisdom is important. Bless them that curse you. They use four letter word. They use bad word. They spoke bad against you. You don't stand back with Pentecostal anointing, give back. No, that's what one lady did in one church. 15 years, she was beaten up badly by her drunk husband. He kept beating her up. Every Sunday, she will get beaten up. Every Sunday. She gets beaten up. This is a standard operating procedure in that family. He will drink, he will beat. Saturday night, after 15 years, there was a tarrying prayer. Tarrying prayer for traditional Pentecostals, you know. Tarrying prayer means those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a time to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speak in new tongues as the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. This lady, after 15 years, got filled with the Holy Spirit. She started speaking in tongues. That night she came home very late. Husband was fully drunk. Usually Sunday is the ceremony of beating. But this fellow decided today night only I will start. Now next day morning, this lady came back to church and gave a victory testimony. 15 years my husband was beating me. But last night I filled with the Holy Spirit. I went home. He caught me and he took his hand. She said, I gave him one tight slap. <laughs> now, that's not how you overcome by love. <laughs> Bless them that curse you. That man may have needed it, but appropriating that blessing to the Holy Spirit may not be right. Bless them that curse you. Now, you don't have to do it in their hearing. Every time they speak a bad word, you don't have to shout out a blessing. No. In your heart, don't curse them. Do good to them that hate you. You know they hate you, but you do what is good. You don't do anything bad. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And Pastor, what do I do? They just misuse me. Pray for them. Pray for them. Why is the Bible saying this? See, God is saying... Number one, remove the negative emotion of hate. Don't allow hatred to grow in your mind. Second, whenever you speak, speak blessing. Third, don't retaliate based on what they did. Don't react based on what they did. Act based on what is right for you to do. And move forward. I always say this. Uh, once me and my wife and children somewhere many years ago we were traveling on the highway and we were on a bigger car and one smaller car overtook us what he did was wrong because the way he overtook us was not right and my children just said dad this is not done and my heart also it just uh... <laughs> that fellow rubbed on my ego that was a smaller car ours was a bigger car and you overtake decently, not coming so close and rubbing and going. And I didn't rub, but felt like that. And my children's inspiration, my wife is our speed control, but she was sleeping. <laughs> huh. Pastor Cynthia was sleeping, so I was on a revival. <laughs> my children kept saying, Dad, go for it. We overtook him. About 20 kilometers, we chased him. We overtook him. We retaliated. But that's when we heard the GPS say, rerouting, rerouting. <laughs> because <laughs> out of that retaliation to overtake him, we forgot where we were going. <laughs> then GPS had to reroute us. 20 kilometers we had to come back. My wife was asking, what took us so long? He told her that we had a victory in between. <laughs> so some of you I know, now you're looking back for your way. See, don't retaliate. Pray for them and acknowledge the fact that God has a plan even for the people we don't like. And love them with wisdom. And I'll explain this a little later. 
And then the Lord Jesus tells us why we should do this. He says, because end of the day, it is your heavenly father who decides how much sunshine and how much rain you should get, how much sunshine and how much rain they should get. In other words, Jesus is saying the tap of resources is in your heavenly father's hand. At some point, he will shut that tap for them and open the tap for you. So you got to walk in God's ways. There is a divine principle over here that if you walk in the love of God and behave in the love of God, the love of God will operate supernatural principles for you. But God's love doesn't operate like software and vending machines. God's love operates in a way where it seasons us, takes time, prepares us. Patience is a key word. Obey God because you love God. Obedience is important. Obedience is a sign of loving God. Yes, you will obey the heart of God when you really love God. Back in those days when I used to do Bible studies in colleges, uh, I was an unmarried young boy just, you know, going around on my bike, taking Bible studies. And once, I don't want to take the name of this medical college, but every week we started a Bible study in that medical college and we didn't have a place. So behind the canteen, there was a little bit of a garden kind of forest kind of, I don't know, some kind of an area. And we used to, there was a little light there. So we used to have uh, behind the canteen, a Bible study. And what surprised me is one day there was this girl who came, I couldn't recognize her. And uh, I asked for her name and they all started laughing. They said, you're asking name. You forgot me. I felt bad. I said, I'm sorry. What happened is she had cut her hair and she had changed herself and I really didn't recognize her. And she looked nice, I mean, before and after. But it's just that she looked different, so it didn't hit me, you know. And I had this rule in my life, never look twice at a woman, because once itself is distracting enough, you know. <laughs> so I, I didn't recognize her, and I asked her name, and she got upset. And she didn't get upset, but she got surprised. I mean, she must have thought, what an idiot this guy is, you know. He teaches the Bible, but can't remember my name. But anyway... Then after the Bible study, when she left my boyfriends, they, boyfriends means friends who are boys, that's all. <laughs> ah, these days, every word. English is a funny language. So the fr my friends who were in the Bible study, boys, <laughs> they told me, Pastor, you know what happened? Now she has a new boyfriend. That fellow doesn't come for Bible study. He doesn't like long hair. He likes this kind of thing. So automatically she went and cut her hair. We know where, which boutique she went. These boys, they keep track of everything, you know. <laughs> College days, no? So then they told me. That's when I realized. Because she used to love the way she dressed up. But suddenly she changed because someone she loves... She wanted to honor that guy's feelings. He wasn't speaking to her and controlling her. It was just her reaction. You know, when you love somebody, you will automatically change to their desires. This is a fact. When you really love God, obeying God becomes very easy. When you really love God, honoring Him becomes very easy. You're not arguing with him. You're not debating with him because you trust in his love. Love produces a lot of positive emotions like happiness, excitement, satisfaction. But it can also produce negative emotions like, yeah, love can produce jealousy, depression, persistiveness, stress. To avoid negative emotions, it's important to practice forgiveness, purity, faith in God. Loving God and honoring his character, his, God's law. Actually, God's law is basically God's character. When God says, thou shall not steal, it's because God doesn't steal. When God says, don't commit adultery, it's because God believes in commitment. He doesn't believe in pleasure without commitment. So God's law is basically God's character. And honoring God's law is paramount to a successful life. 
Now, the disaster, when you live without love, there are people who say, I don't need love, no love, give me no love. You know, there's a disaster in that. There are physical, emotional and spiritual damages, including economic and social damages, if you ignore the power of love. Love is a, in business, they'll tell you, man, relationships are very important. You've got to keep good relationships. Because in fact, more than your intelligence quotient, your relationship, adaptability, social, emotional quotient helps you with greater success. In fact, the medical power of love has to be understood. It lowers the risk of heart disease and death by heart attack. This is scientific studies, which is basically copying from the scripture with some statistical data. Bible says this, love produces better health habits. Love gives you longer life. <laughs> Those of you who don't want to enjoy love, you're suicidal. Enjoy God's love. It gives you longer life. It lowers stress levels. It causes you lesser depression. I was surprised with this medical study. If you enjoy love, if you enjoy, I'm, not, I'm talking about agape love. I'm talking about uh, philo love. I'm talking about not about lust, I'm talking about love of care, storge, give, take, parental, relational, and above all, agape love of God. All right, these kind of love, it, it reduces, according to healthcare, a statistical medical record. Even diabetes can be lowered through effective, loving lifestyle. Oh. See, that's why the devil wants to bring hatred in your life. Because it has a negative effect on you. When the devil can't attack you directly, he will cause you to doubt God's love. So that negativity can come into your life. You and I must serve God because we love God. Hallelujah. Serve God because you love. I'll tell you one Indian truth. This is Indian truth. Most of the women, they don't know cooking when they get married. Then they start learning. But you know when they become master chef? When their children are born. Oh, they love that baby and want to give it the best. So they, they master on being the best chef. Oh, to a point where these boys, when they get married, they can't understand their wife because mother's food is so good. <laughs> when did mother's food become good? When she became mother. Love makes you serve. Love makes you serve. This is a reality. Love makes you serve. Me and my wife, after our marriage, I, I took her to a beautiful restaurant. Small one, but beautiful. And uh, I can't remember what exactly, but uh, we ordered some stuff and all that. And then the waiter brings us a special ice cream. And he says, uh, I said, I didn't order this. And he just smiled and said, it's for you, sir. I was telling my wife, these guys are clever, man. We didn't order this. And now they'll bill us for this anyway. It was beautiful ice cream. It was done nice. So I didn't waste time arguing with that waiter. I enjoyed. But then I called the waiter and asked him, but why did you bring this? Because, you know, slowly it began to hit me. This is costly. <laughs> Every pleasure comes with a price. <laughs> then the waiter told me, sir, Chef sent it for you. I said, which chef? Said the guy in the kitchen. Said, call him here. Then he comes out. Pastor, so nice to see you. Love makes you serve extra. <laughs> and, and, and he didn't bill me. He said, Pastor, I never get a chance to meet you in the church. Today you popped into, you've hopped into my restaurant. How can I leave you? He said, thank you. Love. Love, love makes you do extra things. In case I come to your home, don't serve me ice cream. That's not my message. But love makes you serve. Even if you're going through pain, you're going through struggle, love makes you serve. There's this young lady called Johnny. At the age of 17, she was going to high school, very smart, beautiful, you know, used to go to church once in a while, maybe at least once a month. In her own words, Jesus you know, used to be in the hip back pocket of a Levi jeans. That's about it. Not in the heart. 
But at the age of 17, this beautiful young lady who was successful, Johnny, jumped off into swimming. But somehow she hit her head at the floor, broke her spine, her neck, and became a completely paralyzed person. And in the hospital bed, when the doctors gave her this terrible sentence that, you are not going to die, but you will never walk again. You forever are on a wheelchair. For a few months, for years, she cried, God, I want to die. And she tried to kill herself. She can't move her hands and legs. The only thing she could do was somehow turn her neck suddenly and break her neck. So she tried every stunt to kill herself. But she couldn't die. Finally, she said, God, now that I can't kill myself, help me to live for you. I'm not able to kill myself. At least now that I have to live, make it meaningful. The last 55 years, going around the world, sitting on a wheelchair, she's been explaining to people that just because something bad happened to your life, your life doesn't have to be meaningless. Your life can be meaningful. Johnny and her friends started a worldwide campaign visiting over hundreds of nations, encouraging young people not to give up. Life is meaningful. A few years, a few months ago, she just celebrated her 55th anniversary of sitting on a wheelchair and said if people celebrate their birthdays, if people celebrate their retirement, if people celebrate the day they got a job, why don't I celebrate something significant that happened in my life? I don't have to look at everything as a bad thing. I can trust God's love and his plan and look at things as a good thing that God still has a plan for my life. When bad things happen, don't doubt God's love. This is so very important. That's why 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not... Religion is burdensome. Society is burdensome. God's commandments are easy. They are not burdensome. To be led by the Holy Spirit, to walk in the love of God is beautiful. The other day, somebody was telling me, I don't believe in God. I said, it's the most foolish thing to do. I said, listen, if you believe in God, you have advantage. And he asked me how. I said, let's compare. You don't believe in God, I believe in God. What's the difference? Nothing. You have fun, I have fun. You have good food, I have good food. You have a good life, I have good life. Finally, when you die, you don't know where you go. When I die, I know where I go. So if God is not there, I lose nothing because I have everything you have. But if God is there, I'm successful and you are a failure. Even by simple logic, school of logic, trusting God is far better than trusting in nothing. So believe in God, believe in his commandments. Honesty and morals are natural when we overcome in God's love. There is no need to fear and compromise. Have courage in God's love. Know that God's love is on my life and I will succeed in the name of Jesus. God's love is there behind me. There's one guy whose name I want to take and I want to pray with you. This guy's name is Joseph. Joseph was in a beautiful home. Beautiful for him, not for others. And his father loved him so much. His brothers hated him. But he knew God's plan for Israel because he knew he was the grandson of Abraham whom God had called. And he knew that as a great grandson of father Abraham, God has a plan with my life. God loves me. He knew that. But what happens is brothers hated him. And when they got an opportunity, his own blood brothers, you know, tied him hands and legs and threw him in a pit. At least, uh, lose his hands and legs and throw him in the pit. No. Tied his hands and legs. Why? So that he cannot come out of the pit. People who throw us in the pit usually go through the process. No. They make sure we can't climb out. But don't worry. Our God is an expert. He knows how to get you out of the pit. Because he himself came out of the grave. Hallelujah. You can trust the one who came out of the grave to bring you out of any pit. And the Bible says, <laughs> they tied him and threw him. 
into the pit, hoping he will die after some time of malnutrition, of, of whatever, of famine, of starvation. But then they found that they can make money out of him. So they sold him. They pulled him out. When they pulled him out, he thought, God's love is bringing me out. Didn't know his brothers were selling him as a slave. They sold him as a slave and brothers made money. As a slave, now he goes to Egypt. He's sold in the slave market in the house of one Mr. Potiphar. Potiphar worked in the king's palace. He was very busy. He worked day and night. He worked more than 12 hours a day. He was very tired, busy, had no time for his wife or family, had a lot of money. Darling, whatever you want, you buy. Don't talk to me. I'm busy. That kind of a man. Hmm. Joseph, as a slave boy in that house, began to grow. He became like a master of the house. You know, when you believe in God's love, it doesn't matter where you throw you, how bad they put you down, you'll keep going up. That, that is natural. Yes, sometimes they'll drop you down, but again, you will keep going up. So they finally, you know, that lady, she fell in love with this fellow. People who have God's call on their life, they're attractive. <laughs> they are attractive. Only thing wrong people get attracted to us. We are attractive. This lady came, Mrs. Joseph, Mrs. Potiphar came to Joseph. Her name is not there in the Bible. That's why I'm calling her Mrs. Potiphar. She came to Joseph and said, I love you. He said, thank you. <laughs> she said, you didn't understand. I love you. The, see, the thing is, it's not a one-time event. It is not a Valentine Day infatuation. This is, the Bible says, day after day. Fighting temptation once is easy. But when it comes every day, oh, very difficult. Especially when it walks on two beautiful feet. Joseph had to tell her no every day. Finally, she, just because you're saying no to temptation, don't think it will leave you. One day she caught him like a Dracula. Caught him so hard, he ran out of the house in the process. She was left with his clothes. It came off. And he ran out naked. Because he believed in the father's love. More than in any other love. And he kept telling her, you know, when you have real love for God, it becomes easy to walk in righteousness. And he kept saying, how can I do this? I can't do this because God is watching us. This lady got so angry, her, her, her eros, her uh, lustful love, her consumation love turned into hatred. And she said, this fellow, me too, hashtag. <laughs> English is a funny language. <laughs> they beat him up, poor fellow. He did the right thing. But you see, there is no justice. They beat him up, put him in the prison. But he still believed in the father's love. In the prison, the prison keeper, everyone fell in love with him. And he became de facto prison keeper. That the prison keeper gave the keys to prisoner Joseph and went off on vacation. I mean, imagine yeah, when God's love is something you trust in, you will keep overcoming wherever you are. You will be an overcomer. Hallelujah. Oh, go ahead. Give God a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, to cut the story short, he became the prime minister of Egypt. Became the prime minister of Egypt. And now there is a huge famine in the land. And all are coming to the prime minister's office for food and for relief and for, you know, living, livelihood. And one day Joseph sees his brothers standing in front of him. Father's love engulfs his heart. When the brothers realize the prime minister is the fellow we sold as a slave, he is our brother. They were shivering. They were scared because now this fellow will kill us. Joseph cried, hugged them and said, what you meant for bad, God meant for good. Amen. Hallelujah. I told you, Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Because the tap of eternal resources is in your heavenly father's hand. 
Don't forget that. Hallelujah. Joseph understood this principle. He understood it's the heavenly father who controls the sunshine and the rain. And he didn't do any harm to them because he knew they are a part of God's greater plan for the promised land. I want you and me today to make up our mind. We're not just going to comfort ourselves in the religion, but we want to become overcomers in the love of our heavenly father. Love people instead of hating them. Love your work. Don't just endure and suffer in your work. Love your ethics. Don't just tolerate your morals. Love your life as a gift God has given. Don't reject God's love. This morning, if you are a person who've not said yes to the love of Jesus, say yes to God's love and say, thank you for loving me. And I promise to love you back above everything. The greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength. Say, God, I want to love you back. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior. I know you went to the cross because you loved me. You didn't have to die for yourself. You died for me. And I received that love of yours. And I believe I'm going to be more than an overcomer. I may have difficult times. I may go through challenges, but I'll come out victorious. Believing in your love, in your plan. Our eyes are closed, our heads are bowed. Take a minute to say, Father, I thank you for your love for me today. I thank you for your care for me today. I thank you for your grace for me today. That positive emotion of love. Let it fill my life so that I don't engage in the negative things. I want to be filled with your agape, with that unconditional love of yours, that I'll know how to enjoy the storge, the philo, the social love. And I'll be careful not to mess my life in erotic, lustful love. That I want to be holy in your hands. Help me, Lord, not to try and replace divine love, social love, with the love of lust and physical intimacy. Help me, Master. Help me not to walk in sin, but in the righteousness of your love. I thank you. This Friendship Day, I thank you that you offered your friendship for us. We are so reminded in your word, Lord, when you said, I no longer call you my disciples. I don't call you my slaves. I call you my friends. Thank you for that scripture that you call us your friends. Help us, Father, to honor that friendship you offered to be a friend of God. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, we totally acknowledge your love for us. We thank you for your faithfulness. This month, thank you that we will be more than overcomers. Thank you, Father, that in our studies, in our career, in our relationships, the motivation will be the truth about your love for our success. The fact that you care for us and help us to reciprocate in worship. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand as we sing a song and then we'll pray and close. There's an old song. We sang it once, I think about a year or two ago. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Let's sing together. Oh, are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down your cheeks and bite him? Tell it to Jesus. Have you said that too many eyes are hidden? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is 
a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend of God. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is the friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Let's sing it again. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus. Go ahead, take a few minutes. Let's clap our hands, open our mouth, and shout out his praises. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, open your mouth, lift up your voice. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of hatred, every spirit of vengeance, every spirit of demonic, let it be cast out in Jesus' name. Every spirit of bondage, every spirit of depression, move out in Jesus' name. Let the people's mind be filled with divine love. Let it be filled with the agape love of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A new courage, a new boldness, a new anointing, a new life of victory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let the Holy Spirit fill you with new tongues, with new vision, with new energy, with new power. You're going to live your life in the power of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you're standing, clap your hands, open your mouth. Go ahead and praise Him for some time. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to him for a minute and tell him, Father, I worship your majesty today. I come to you in that eternal love of your grace and I worship your majesty. I worship your majesty. I worship your majesty, Jesus. Majesty. We worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be all glory, honor, and praise. If you want to put your hands down, please do. Let's sing together. Oh, majesty. Yes, my Jesus. Flows from his throne unto his own, his anthem raised. So exalt the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we lift your name, magnify. Come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Oh, majesty, worship His majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified. Keep on forgiving 
thank you father god for speaking to us through your word today we thank you lord that your word is everlasting to everlasting we thank you for your divine love oh god we pray that as a church as an individual that you would give us your grace and the strength oh god lord to trust and to hope put our hope in your divine love the overcoming love that overcomes every situations of our life lord we worship you today dear lord at this time we pray for those who are coming here for the very first time who are watching us online today for the first time lord we pray that your divine love will cover them that your love and your salvation be upon their lives and may their lives never be the same again lord we pray for those who are celebrating that birthdays their marriage anniversaries this week thank you for adding another year into their life we pray that the years ahead will be fruitful greater brighter stronger for the glory of your name we pray for those who are traveling this week may your presence go with them lord we also pray for the tithes and the offering that is given to you wholeheartedly bless the hands that has given oh god let them not lack any good thing that your divine provision be upon each one of them lord may this week be a victorious week overcoming week in each one of our lives we give you all the glory honor and praise in jesus most holy name we pray amen now may the grace of our lord jesus the love of our heavenly father and the sweet abiding presence of the holy spirit rest and be with us from now and forevermore amen amen god bless you all before we could leave want to take this time to welcome all of you who are here for the first time who are watching us online today for the first time come on let's put our hands together give them a very warm welcome we want you to know that we love you and if it is all right with you we would love to meet you in our guest lounge that is outside and we want to know more about us please log on to our church website god bless you all and have a blessed week